Hi, this lecture is on quadratic number fields. It's a part of the Sanjini based Cryptography Summer School of Bristol 2021. Class notes are available through the link in the comment section. In this lecture, we specify some of our results from general number fields to the specific case of quadratic number fields, which is most relevant to isogeny uh, calculations, in particular for elliptic curves. So we'll be mostly interested in the imaginary case, but real case is also very important to us. I mean, it, it has a lot of uh, overlap with the imaginary case. So uh, we can define a, uh, an order in a quadratic number field, real or imaginary, from its discriminant. A discriminant is a perfect is a, num a number that is not a square and that is congruent to one or zero modulo four. Now, fractional ideals are of the form q times this module here, where q is in q a rational and a and b are integers. And the inverse, when uh, so the inverse is given by one over the uh, q over the norm times uh, this uh, expression that depends on a and b. The norm uh, is just given by the first coefficient. So it's a there. It's a very convenient uh, uh, writing uh, of fractional ideals here. Now, prime ideals are also very uh, convenient to analyze in the quadratic case. Uh, remember that we have three different possibilities, this uh, P splitting, P being inert, or some ramification. Now, for P being a prime, we split if and only if the Kronecker symbol here is one uh, modulo P. So if delta is a root mod, the square root mod P. And the opposite uh, means that P is inert. In this case, uh, we have that P times the order is a prime ideal. And the ramification happens when P divides the discriminant. So very few primes are ramified because, well, uh, it only happens uh, where, to the finitely many primes that divide the discriminant. Now, the norm of a prime that divides P, so that lies above the rational prime P, is can be it can take two different values in the split ramified case because f is equal to one remember the the uh, uh, the index the the the, the, uh, the dimension of, of o divided by p uh, with respect to fp then you have that the norm of prime is just the prime p above which it lies and in the inert case only in the inert, inert case do we have something different where the norm of p is p square um, and so uh, these are the two different possibilities. Again, restricting, um, it's a very restrictive case compared to general number fields. Now, we need to talk about union group and regulators uh, for the reasons that I've explained uh, in the previous lecture, uh, because they will be, the regulator is important when it comes down to testing whether or not you think that you have the right class group. Turns out, in the in the quadratic fields, we have a very uh, it's um, the unit group has a very simple structure. In fact, in the imaginary case, we have a very simple structure because we know in advance which which are the units. So in this case, the Euler product, the approximation of h times r, where r is the regulator, is basically an approximation of h. So in the imaginary quadratic case, what I said previously in the previous lecture about the fact that you cannot just say, I want to calculate the class group in isolation from the unit group. Well, because in the imaginary quadratic case, we already know the unit group, then we are in fact just calculating the class group. So the unit group is essentially plus or minus one for most of the discriminant, except for delta equals minus three and minus four. Okay, in which case we have uh, extra roots, but usually those cases, of course, are not even important to us because we're interested in large discriminants, I mean, discriminants that are large in absolute value. Now, for the record, I'll state what um, the unit group looks like in a quadratic order, okay? Remember, in the quadratic order, we have r1 equals 1, uh, sorry, r1 equals 2, okay, two real embeddings, 
and R2 equals zero, and so the rank of the unit group is R1 plus R2 minus one, which is one, okay? So you have a rank, the torsion-free part has rank one, so what it means is there is a fundamental unit that generates a torsion-free part. And by definition, the regulator here, it's, so it's going to be uh, just a log of that unit because it's basically a determinant of a one by one uh, matrix, right? my favorite uh, kind of determinant. So this is becoming a very easy, easy way to calculate the determinant, uh, so the, the regulator, as long as you can find the uh, fundamental unit. Now, there is a um, way in the imaginary, I mean, in both real and imaginary case, we can map ideals to quadratic forms uh, of discriminant delta. Now, this is going to be very important in the imaginary quadratic case because we have a nice correspondence between the classes of the ideals in the class group and certain kinds of binary quadratic forms of discriminant delta. So let's be a little bit more specific here. We can map primitive ideals, and I, uh, you can check the, in the notes, uh, it's a form of reduction. So certain kinds of ideals can be mapped to quadratic forms. And for, for, for normal, normal uh, fractional ideals, this is actually a bijection. And it turns out that a uh, imaginary quadratic orders reduced, there's only one reduced ideal per equivalence class in the class group. So what does that really mean? So I gave the notion of, the precise notion of reduction in the notes. What it means is when we have the right relationship between the coefficients of the form or the ideal because they're in bijection for the case of reduction and the delta, the discriminant, then they're reduced and there's only one such element in a equivalence class of the class group. So what it means is we can represent, we can choose to represent this class of the class group by that one reduced representative. And we can perform arithmetic operations not on ideals, but on, on reduced quadratic forms. So what do we have? We have that the composition of the forms that are in correspondence with ideals, with reduced ideals A and B, is simply the composition of those forms, okay? So the, the, the product of the ideals in correspondence to the composition of the corresponding forms, and when we reduce, when we when we do this composition and then we reduce it, so and through an algorithm that I give you in the note that I give in the notes, which is essentially a reduction step, then then what we have is we have the uh, unique representative, uh, I mean of the unique repre uh, reduced representative of the product a b in the class group. So. The takeaway here is that we know in the imaginary quadratic case, we know how to easily perform arithmetic between elements in the class group by looking at, by representing them with reduced binary quadratic forms and doing composition reduction steps, okay? And these are efficient, they're polynomial in log delta. So these are very efficient steps that, that we know how to perform. And this is gonna be at the, at the heart of every computational problems where we involve uh, classes of the ideal class group of an imaginary quadratic order. So in this lecture, we have seen how to specialize the results of the class group ideals and number fields to the quadrat imaginary quadratic case, which is really one of the most, which is the most relevant case when it comes to isogeny-based cryptography because there is a strong connection with uh, isogenies in ordinary elliptic curves and super singular elliptic curves defined over FP. And in the subsequent lectures, we'll focus on, we'll focus on, on how to actually compute those structures, in particular the computation of the class group. Thank you for your attention.